Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats, and I'm going to take this Bass Tracker Pro Team 17 and turn it from bare aluminum and strip to fully built and mint. Stick around, and I'm going to show you the entire build process step by step in this video. Let's dive right in, guys. This is a 1997 Bass Tracker Pro Team 17 brought down to me from North Carolina. And for those keeping track, this gives me boat builds in three states, Georgia, Tennessee, and now North Carolina. The customer started this project, and then it was turned over to me. All the carpet was already removed, and it was gutted and stripped of bare aluminum. The game plan was to add all new carpet, upgrade the electronics, new gator skins, update a majority of the wiring package, reconfigure the batteries, update the live well, and many, many, many more details. This video documents the entire build from start to finish. I'll walk you through what I did and how I did it in the order I did it in. There's a full parts list in the video description for anyone interested in what I used. If you order anything from tinyboatnation.net, use the code BRIGADE and save 5% off your order. I took all the factory lids and I sanded the hinges with 220 grit. As you can see, this removes years of gunk and grime and gives them a nice new clean finish. I then carpeted all the hatch lids for the boat. I won't go into a ton of detail here because I do have a step-by-step -step how to carpet video coming soon on the channel that I filmed on this particular boat. As you can see, I used contact cement here and I labeled the direction each lid faces forward. I then cut all the carpet for every part of the boat from the same direction forward off of the carpet roll. Basically, I orient the carpet grain inside of the boat. This eliminates any color, shade, or grain variations. If you want your carpet job to match perfectly, it needs to be wrapped with everything facing the same direction off the roll. Again, greater detail to come in my how-to carpet video. I went back with half-inch exterior gray plywood for the floor and the front deck. This is a direct replacement for what Bass Tracker uses from the factory, but as an upgrade, I like to add a layer of fiberglass resin to seal the wood tops and help eliminate moisture intrusion. I sand the wood first and then generously coat the parts and let them cure. Once cured, I sand again with 60 grit to scuff the surface and give the carpet glue something to bite to. I carpeted the floor and the front deck next. For carpeting wooden parts, I prefer to use carpet glue. Again, I wrap these parts directionally with the carpet grain, and I use stainless steel staples on all my laps. For the front deck, I had to pre-mount a seat pedestal base with stainless steel hardware before I could carpet it. I moved on to the front of the boat. I took off the trolling motor and I removed the old factory grip tape. With the help of xylene and a spray bottle, I removed the remaining adhesive. Once the bow was prepped and cleaned properly, I reskinned it in a product called Gator Skins, which is an anti-skid material. It's super awesome product and I've used it in previous builds. It comes in sheet material, so it's cut to fit, and I cut the specific shape I needed off camera before applying it to the bow of the Bass Tracker. I bounce to the rear deck next. Typically, there are holes in the back deck from the factory where they inject the pour foam. Usually, these holes are just taped over and then carpeted over. The tape deteriorates over time, and depending on the boat, sometimes you can see the holes underneath the carpet job. To solve this problem and make it mo better, I like to take scrap 060 and patch over the holes. This gives a better final carpet job, but is a detail that is often overlooked. From there, it was time to grind and clean up the aluminum and remove any remnants of original carpet glue or carpet before adding new carpet down. Quick note, you'll see in a minute that I use carpet glue on the back deck, and this is for workability. Because I work solo, it's hard to use contact cement on large surface area carpet parts without having a helping hand. <laughs> Thank you. 
With the majority of the carpet inside the boat, it was time for electrical. I started by wiring in the LED strip lights that would illuminate the decking, two up front and two in the back. I was able to route the wiring through the gunnels to hide all the wiring. I started wiring in some smaller LED lights in the hatches up front. I needed to get all the wiring done in the front decking area before I covered it with the new decking because once I covered it, I'd no longer have access. In this build, I added a small fuse box up front. This will get covered by the front tray but allow my customer easy access to quickly swap out or add in electronics on the bow particularly graphs or depth finders. This way he doesn't have to fish wires through the entire boat when he upgrades. This fuse box is powered by dedicated leads from the accessory battery in the back of the boat and it also runs through the battery kill switch that you'll see later on in this video. With the front deck installed, I moved on to the floor where I addressed a problem I found with the drainage. The factory pour foam was actually impeding drainage. My guess is when they pour foam the boat, it expanded and filled the drainage channels when the boat was originally built. I cut and removed the excess foam and debris and cleaned the channels for proper drainage moving forward. With the floor in place, it was time to attach it. A little trick I like to do is take self-tapping screws, spray paint them in flat gray, and then I mist flat black specks over that to mimic the carpet color. This makes them virtually invisible when installed. I take the screws and I bury them through the carpet and wood and into a rib or framing to tie the part down. This is also how I attach the front deck in this boat. I started work on the rod locker side panel. Factory fitment was off here, so I added aluminum where necessary. I templated out the rod locker mounting points and left that bare aluminum for proper fitment. Just a trick I started implementing after doing a bunch of these bass trackers. You'll also see I left the top aluminum to mount the rod locker lid and hinge to, and then carpet after. This is not how the factory does it, and it takes more time and thought up front, but it gives a clean and better than factory finished result if done correctly. I also added a new locking latch to the rod locker lid. Parts started showing up and it was time to start the live well upgrades. First, I replaced the live well pump with an 800 GPH pump by Atwood. I fitted it with a stainless steel mesh screen. Next, I cut the sheet aluminum in the back wall of the rear hatch. I would need to gain access to the live well tub to upgrade it with a recirculation pump and the flow right plumbing parts. I mounted up the new live well fill spray head and ran the live well fill plumbing hose. I then mounted the 500 GPH Atwood Tsunami recirculation pump with stainless steel mesh screen and the Flowright pump out aerator combo spray head. Of course, 3M 5200 on all of the fittings. I removed factory foam to clear a good route for the new live well pump out plumbing and then, everybody's favorite part, drilling a big hole through the side of a perfectly fine boat. This shot shows the live well pump out completed and the route that the hose takes, which is through the foam, underneath the factory drop-in hatch box, and then through the dividing wall to the Flowrite pump out aerator combo. You can also see the Atwood Tsunami 500 GPH recirculation pump installed at this point. I began wiring up the back of the boat by installing a new set of LED lights in the rear hatch as well as the jump seat area. On the transom corners, I installed some new gator skins and then I wired and mounted a pole light base for the new telescopic LED pole light. Every boat build I do comes with its own unique battle. For this boat, it was the wiring package. I spent hours and hours going through the boat's original wiring, figuring out what worked and what didn't, how I'd add my accessories, consolidate the wiring while upgrading the total package in conjunction with the factory wiring harnesses. It was a lot of work and I really did have to take it one wire at a time. I started with a new fuse box negative bus terminal with new dedicated eight gauge leads coming in from the accessory battery. Next up, I added a new 600 GPH bilge pump. The problem here was that the factory hose was routed through poor foam and it wasn't removable and the original bilge pump mounting location I thought was not ideal. So to solve this problem, I'd add a hose barb and extend the factory hose with new hose to the new bilge pump's mounting location. 
I added a Pro Mariner 15 amp onboard charger and installed new battery trays. We ran a Group 27 battery for the trolling motor and a Group 29 battery for the outboard and all onboard electronics. I had to reconfigure the battery layout in the rear to accommodate the now protruding live well recirculation upgrades along with the onboard charger. Not a lot of real estate in the rear, but I was able to squeeze everything in nice and tight. <laughs> After mounting some deck lids, finger pulls, more lights, interior panels, and a kill switch, I mounted new seats. The customer ordered these and had them shipped to me, and they are super nice. The driver's seat mounted to the factory bracket, while the passenger bolts directly to the hatch lid. Next, I mounted the custom center console by TB Nation Outdoors. These are available in a variety of sizes and colors on the website and make a great addition to any console boat project. We use the black powder coated version on this build. I reattached the jump seat lid and began working on mounting a strut to it. This bass tracker didn't come with any struts on the lids from the factory, but we wanted to add some to this build. After adding the strut, I immediately ran into a problem. The strut would bind due to the geometry of the mounting point and the recess of the lid. With some scrap aluminum, I was able to correct the problem by offsetting the strut mounting point with a spacer. Another detail of the project that most would probably never notice. I strutted the front deck lid and I used the same technique with the spacer for the strut on the back deck transom hatch lid. And finally, the last part of the boat was carpeted. I thought this was pretty cool. My customer 3D printed a new panel for the trolling motor plug and outboard trim switch, which mounts to the front tray. Next up, it was time to remount the Minn Kota power drive to the bow of the boat. Time to give the old console a new life. First, I cleaned it in denatured alcohol. Then I scuffed the surface really well with a red scotch Bright pad and I cleaned it again. I then taped off the steering wheel and all of the gauges. Then I sprayed a few coats of matte gray paint to give it a brand new look. The paint job turned out really well and I saved a few bucks in the overall budget by not replacing the console. On the back of the transom, I removed the old transducer and prepared to mount the new transducer for the Helix 5 that we would mount on the console. That's when I discovered a pinhole in the transom. I used a quick non-weld fix by using solid rivets and 3M5200 for the old transducer holes in the pinhole that I found. I then got the Helix 5 transducer mounted up nice and clean. Meanwhile, we will mount a Helix 7 up front with a mega side imaging transducer on the trolling motor. On the front tray, I installed a ram mount for the Helix 7 and I beefed up the support on the tray by backing it with 090 sheet aluminum. I also got that 3D printed panel installed and I cut a custom plate for the cable routing through the tray that I think is a nice hidden detail. You can also see the graph tied into the bow's dedicated fuse box. And lastly, I got the tray reinstalled and the graph all mounted up and ready to go.
Next, I would fill the space in front of the steering console with built-in tackle storage. This was actually my customer's idea as he purchased this pre-built box that holds three Plano trays. I was really impressed with the quality of this box and how well it was put together, and it was a perfect fit for the space we had in this old 97 Tracker. I got to work framing out a deck extension support out of 1 16th angled aluminum. Once the framework was done, I created a template for the deck part I'd need to cut out. I transferred the shape from the template to half inch exterior gray plywood, and then I cut it out. I added a small return, and then I coated the part really well in fiberglass resin to give it a good seal. And as you can see here, the water beads right off of that resin as it gives the part an extra layer of protection. I lightly sanded the resin to give the carpet something to bite to, and then I got to work carpeting the part. Once finished, it fit right into place like it was made that way from the factory. From there, I permanently mounted the top and screwed the storage box in place for the final install. I think this portion of the project turned out really clean and sets this build apart. It was one of the more unique mods that I've done recently. If you like it as much as I do, check out the full in-depth step-by-step tutorial video I did on this built-in tackle storage here on my channel. Underneath the jump seat, I took the rear pole light and the front nav light and voila! I made it mo' better by adding storage clips for the lights to be safe and out of the way. I got to work creating a removable panel that would allow access to the factory wiring harnesses. This was a design change from how the boat originally came. We upgraded the wiring and accessories to the boat and needed a bigger fuse box. This panel would double down as removable access and the fuse box mounting location underneath the console. I had a custom engraved switch panel arrive from the folks at Seastone Marine in Atlantic Beach, Florida. It turned out flawless and was yet another fine detail for this project. Because we added a live wheel timer and more accessory switches than the original factory switch panel, the new panel wouldn't fit the old location. No problem for the Milwaukee rotary tool, simply cut the console to accommodate the new switch panel. From there, it was time to clean up the rat's nest and finally wire up the boat. With everything wired up, it was time to clean the exterior of the boat. To do this, I used Purple Power Aluminum Brightener. I purchased it at my local O'Reilly's, so shout out to the boys in Hoshton, Georgia. This product is also available on Amazon, and the application is straightforward. Spray on, let it sit for a few seconds, gently scrub, spread uniformly, rinse off, repeat as necessary. I took my time with it to get an overall even finish, and all in all, it really cleaned up this old 97. Some final punch list items before we wrap this thing up, guys. I installed new TH Marine floor drains in the cockpit floor. 
On the console where the windshield mounts, I corrected a broken mount point with a little ingenuity. The windshield was then able to mount up nice and solid. And another small detail, I added a bit of gator skins to the steering wheel center as well as a new stainless cup holder to complete this project. Now that the 1997 Bass Tracker Pro Team 17 has been given a modern restoration, the only thing left to do is call the customer and have him pick it up. But before he does, let's take a final look at the finished rebuild. Fifty hours is kind of <laughs> golly. I mean, it is a brand new boat. Oh my gosh, dude, that is awesome. Yeah. Drove down here from North Carolina. I didn't post a lot on social media because I want to keep you out of the loop. Now, what do you think? Well, I, I got little bits and pieces along the way, but it is uh, definitely surpassed my expectations, and uh, very, very happy with it. So, brand, brand new boat. Yeah, it really is, man. I guess it's off to the next one, cousins. What do you got for me? A boat. Uh -huh.